Hello everyone, it's Chico here and welcome back to another breakdown. This time we're going to talk about Dave and Cowboy by Birds of Canada. But before we do, as usual, please like and subscribe. This helps the channel a lot, alright? A little context to this song, Dave and Cowboy was released in the Campfire Head Phase album, their second album, and it was used in some TV commercials and some TV stuff, I'm not really sure. But um, yeah, and I would say this is a more conventional song in the sense that it has kind of a rock group vibe to it. I guess because the, they use a lot of guitars and a drum that really resembles a real drum set. Um, okay, so let's dive into the song, all right? Let's go. All right, the first thing we're going to talk about here is the tempo. As usual, we like to cover the minor details of a song and the BPM is a really important one. Um, in this case, we have a BPM of around 84. I've done other two breakdowns, one on Everything You Do Is A Balloon and the other on Raiji Biv. On the video about the Everything You Do Is A Balloon, I discussed something interesting, that the tempo changed throughout the whole song and moves and shifts. But uh, it's not that much, it's just like a 2 BPM difference, it's not so abrupt, it's a subtle difference. And um, it happens here too. Um, we have an 84 BPM, but it keeps changing up and down. Sometimes the beat is a little bit faster and sometimes it's a little bit slower. And again, this is a, a nice movement and, and it confirms the fact that I think that some, some of their songs probably were recorded through some gear, some old gear that introduced this shift. And Raiji Biv, as you can see watching the video, this does not happen. The tempo is the same throughout the whole song, it doesn't change. So. I'm thinking that they they intend to do this change. Um, guess to make some more movement to the song. I don't know. We discussed that on the Everything You Do Is A Balloon video. But uh, it's another feature that I think it's common through the, the songs from Boards of Canada. All right. The structure of this song is really simple again, the, as all of the other Boards of Canada songs. Um, it starts with an intro, this time with the guitar playing like an arpeggio, and then we get what we could call an A or a verse, as you want to call it. This verse gets some variation and adds up some other elements again on the second time it appears. And on the third time, the same idea, the same verse, the same part gets some more, even more elements, even more instruments. So uh, structure wise, this song is about build up, is about the climax of things. They keep adding layer after layer until it's a very huge song, a very huge ending, um, a little bit even epic. So yeah, this is what it is. It's a song that uh, starts with the guitar, then adds up some percussion, some pads, then adds up some strings, some other more synths and melodies, and the, in the ending, everything is really big and huge and a lot of delay, a lot of a muddy kind of sound, there's a mess of sound at the end, and it's very powerful, it's very dramatic and kind of epic, as I said. So yeah, this is mainly the structure of the song, all right? So let's start analyzing the intro by itself. Let's hear it. Cool. Just a guitar, I suppose. It is doing kind of an arpeggio um, on the chords that are F major, and then an A major, then an e, an e major, and a B major. They doing a pattern that sounds a little bit like this. I mapped here on this piano. It's tough to to grab the most of the notes of this song and the hits of the percussion and the the drums because um, they apply a lot of delay, a lot of reverb here, so the notes kind of clash with each other, you know, they create this mess of sound, this thing that is really hard to distinguish, okay, so yeah, but um, that's also good because it sounds a little bit more organic and more fluid sometimes, but yeah, let's hear, let's hear what I did here, it's almost this, the pattern, pattern. So the secret here is that um, all of those chords are getting a ninth interval. So the ninth of the F major, F sharp major, should be a G sharp. Um, the A major should have the ninth on the B. The E major should have the ninth on the F sharp. 
and the ninth of the B major is the is the C sharp. All right. So it's that interval, the ninth interval, that creates this kind of a melancholic feel, the, a little bit sad, a little bit um, longing for something. I'm not sure how to describe this emotionally, but um, I think that's what um, makes me drawn into the song, this beginning. And I replicate it in a guitar. I could tab this for you guys, or even I could maybe, I don't know if I'm gonna do this, but I could record a video of you playing it. It's mainly an arpeggio using F major nine with uh, then an A major with a nine, as I said, uh, then an E major with a nine and the B major with a nine. So it should sound something like this. Let's see what I recorded here. The A major and then the B major. Okay. All right, so um, the sound design of this was, I didn't put so much effort on it. I just um, added a delay. Um, I'm using here actually an M simulator and all of these are digital stuff that I used. Um, so there is a tape echo and um, a fuzz too, yeah, because this guitar has a lot of distortion, the guitar on the beginning, the intro, and um, obviously a lot of delay that makes everything um, very muddy, very hard to, to know when they end and when they start and vice versa. But yeah, something like that, I guess with fuzz and delay, you could get really close to this. I, I will maybe tap this for you guys to try and play on your instruments all right so this is a very simple loop here it's a four bar loop doing the chords that i just mentioned and um they repeat it two times so as it happens with um, everything you do is a balloon this also has a, a cycle of eight bars every eight bars something new happens but we're gonna see actually that in this case this eight bar cycle is not gonna be for so much later on the song it's gonna turn into another pattern another way of doing things okay but in this part here and this until the second all of this here we move an eight bar cycle an eight bar cycle okay so we have this eight bars here as the the intro let's say As I said, a lot of fuss, distortion, a lot of noise and delay makes the notes, it makes the notes kind of gravitate. Um, you really can't hear when they start and when they end. And we get our first, which well, we could call this a verse, I don't know how to call this, A part, whatever. Yeah, so after this eight bars, we get introduced to um, a pad and a tambourine too. I think this should be here. Let me see. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this tambourine here, um, I don't know. I keep changing its pattern because it's tough to, to understand it. Because uh, tambourine, you could play it a little bit more loose. Um, I'm not sure if they're using so much samples on this song. I have the feeling that they recorded this song a little bit more live than some of the others. Maybe I'm just wrong, totally wrong on this. But um, it's like, I think that the tambourine is playing together with this hi-hat here. The tambourine doing what should be eighth notes, yeah. And this one doing just, yes, it's doing eight, eighth too, but um, doesn't, it, don't, it doesn't play here in the impulse, I suppose. Because I hear something like two. That could be just the, the tambourine. I'm not sure. I think here's more clear. Yeah, I guess it's just the tambourine, right? Yeah, here you can check it a little bit more, a little bit better. I don't know, I'm not really sure about this. The percussion, the drums in this song are hard to get because as I said, they're very muddy, they're very um, modulated and have a lot of stuff happening. But mainly after eight bars, we get introduced to a tambourine and maybe a hi-hat and that is it about the, the drums in this first part here. After another eight bars, we're gonna check out some other elements, but um, 
and the beat and the drums we just get this um, higher elements here higher frequency frequency elements along with the tambourine we get introduced to a pad uh, beautiful pad that do a movement the notes here move in a similar way as they move in the pad that we see on the everything you do is a balloon i mean it starts low very low in this case and goes up and then low again you know this movement starting subtle and then up and going down 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 let's hear this one let's hear what i did J let's highlight it here without it okay without this increasing its volume it's tough to get it it's, un it's underneath everything so it's very subtle the notes it's starting with a C sharp and then another C sharp up an octave then a G sharp and a D sharp um, the C sharp is actually the fifth of a F sharp major, the chord that we talked about. The C sharp should, should be the third, the major third of the A, the chord A, and the chord A major. The G sharp is the major third of the chord E that happens here, the E major. And the G sharp is another major third that, are, that, are, that happens here on the B major chord. All right, so this is the movement. This is the kind of a melody this pad is doing. Let's hear it for the eight bar cycle that's gonna happen here. I'm gonna highlight it. Okay. Let's turn down. It's kind of the left. Nice, if you're hearing this with headphones, maybe you can catch that. Okay, after this, we're gonna hear um, a thing, an element that's gonna be one of the most important elements of this song, that is noise. Um, the noise is gonna get even, it's gonna increase a lot here, and um, it's gonna work with an LFO, some modulation, some high pass filter, and um, it's gonna be, it's gonna fulfill a role in the song of rising things and making us expectate something new some uh, from time to time, okay? So this noise is gonna be doing that role. Um, let's check it out. The hi-hats and tambourine get, they get a little bit more space, a little bit more in the front of the mix. Hear the noise, rising. Right here, you can you can listen to it. It's like a wind. Stuff like that, some stuff like. That. And um, along with the noise, we get a sample for what seems to be a woman singing some notes, some things. I'm not sure what what is it from where is it from and what is she singing i think we can catch it from time to time okay. yeah right here and here it's pretty clear i even uh, i even highlighted Yeah, similarly to what happened there. Let's. I'm gonna put this instrument here just so you guys can maybe hear this a little bit more clear. Without it. Right? It's really down. It's like underneath everything, so it's tough to grab it, but um, it's there. And um, it's interesting as a producer to analyze those kind of things, because this song, it's, as I said um, earlier, a simple song, a simple structure. The This beginning here, this first bar here, it's a four bar loop mainly. And um, you kind of need to feel it with the, the most interesting things that you can find that maybe are not so up, up front in the mix, but they still are uh, affecting you somehow, okay? Affecting the listener, 
making his ears to grab something to make it a little bit more interesting and sometimes it's a little bit more about the atmosphere that you're creating all right and this sample is a great example of that so we get this to for eight bars after this four bar here we're going to be presented with this low frequency here that um is being modulated being it's making a sound that is fulfilling a role almost like a percussive um, element here. Um, let's listen from here from the sample that I said and I'm gonna realize that this is gonna fade in a low frequency that's gonna make a, a sound, a continuous sound. The sample here. Here it goes. It's increasing its volume. Hear it? The noise, it's getting crazier and crazier. The low frequency. It's getting modulated. Because it's getting modulated, it almost sounds like a kick, like it's it's doing something like a kick would do. Or a tone. Right? And the noise here it's Well yeah. Um the interesting part of this is that we get uh you're pretty much just doing a build up here right the noise is r rising everything the the energy of the song it's making us believe that we're going somewhere that something is about to happen and um that is what it is actually then we're about to get introduced to some new elements and some other ideas for the song so this noise fulfilled this role really well along with the slow frequency and um, yeah, the, the way they modulate and change the sound is, re is really interesting. Let's hear the noise here, how it changed so much. Sounds a lot like a wind, like it's something's about to happen. Cool. Right here, this, I don't know if actually it's this sample, it could be something else. We hear something like a core, like a chorus, like a bunch of people singing together. It's increasing. Some angelical voices. The noise returns again. The noise, this noise is gonna be throughout the whole song. It's gonna be an important element, as I said earlier. But um, one thing here that's interesting that's happening is that I said before that we have a four bar loop, right? So it was a F sharp major, A major, um, E major, and a B major. But right here, things are gonna change a little bit. We're gonna have actually a six bar loop this time because the F sharp major is gonna be extended for another two bars, making a six bar loop. So let's pay attention to that. Let's listen again, trying to catch that, right? F sharp major, the A major, E major, B major, another F sharp major, F sharp major again, okay? So this is our new loop. Now we're gonna move on six bars loop. And um, yeah, it's gonna be a different song this time. It's it's interesting because um, again, on everything you do is a balloon. It has the same kind of idea if you, if you wanna think that because the A minor that starts the progression, the chord progression there also ends the chord progression there. So this could be a theme among them. You know, This could be an idea that they use with um, some frequency. As I said before, the chords are pretty much the same with um, two, another two bars here that are doing F sharp major. But uh, the only thing that we kind of get that, that's different from before is that all of these chords here, they're not really actually chords. It's just, I think that this guitar hits may be in, on uh, drop D, okay? It's maybe tuned to drop D. Um, so this should be like um, a power chord, almost a power chord of an F sharp, then A, uh, an E and a B. So it's like um, doing the F sharp with a C sharp, um, an A with an E, a, uh, I'm sorry. Yes, yes, an A with an E, a, an E with a B and a B with the F sharp, okay? And then repeating the same stuff here. 
But um, up, uh, up here, we get the same chord that is this just an F sharp, a, a C sharp and F sharp again. After each chord, we play the same thing. Okay. Just been changing what could what could be considered the base of, of the chord, so that's what it is. The ninth here, the ninth interval that was so important in the beginning, it's not so much present here, at least not up front, like in your face as it was before. I tried to replicate this again with my guitars. I divide it in two guitars, just because I think that's what's happening actually. Because I can hear a movement on the strings when he's passing his fingers, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, let's hear this. Let's hear what I did. This time, he has less di distortion and just a few of delay. Just doing this kind of power chord and the F sharp on top of it. Okay. Let's hear the song together. One important thing that I didn't really replicate it on my guitar is the tremolo. It's a great effect here because tremolo, if you don't know what it is, it's a modulation on the volume of stuff, okay? It, it keeps um, on a certain frequency, uh, key, it keeps increasing and decreasing the volume, so it creates like a, like a wave of the volume going up and down, and this turns the guitar a little bit more percussive because um, it moves so much that um, it could interact with the beat a little bit more. Um, it creates something, some movement. So it's an interesting effect that you can apply to your sounds, okay? I believe so that the bass is introduced only here. I can't really hear so much the bass in this song, but I, I'm, I'm assuming that the guitar couldn't do so such a low tone, okay? I think this guitar is sounding so heavy that there, there must be a bass here, and I'm just doing the the notes, the tonic notes here, okay? Just the F sharp, going to an A, going to an A, then going to an E, a B, and two F sharps in the ending, all right? Highlighting it. Because it's so heavy that I think that's that's happening there. But it's um it's a bass that if, if it really is there it's it works so well with the guitar that you can really you can tell the sounds you can tell so so much the difference um it just it, it gives the heaviness that the guitar needs to hold this part along with this new pattern we get introduced to some strings here that um are beautiful and again I'm supposing that they're making pretty much the same chords as I described earlier okay let's listen. Let me turn it off a little. Can you guys hear it? I'm just trying to get close, you know? It's tough to... This one is a little bit tough to get the voicing correct. I'm assuming the chords are the same here as I can hear it, but the voice is a tough one. I, I tested some of, uh, of the voicing, but I'm thinking could be those, all right? I think they're working a little bit better. But um, as usual, guys, if there's anything here that you think are wrong, um, that you think should be corrected, please leave a comment, um, uh, email me, send me a message, anything you, you wanna do to reach me, and let's discuss this, okay? Let's make it a little bit better, this breakdown, okay? Um, the, the goal of this is not to, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to say that this is it, okay? That there are no, no other elements that I'm not here or something like that. This is pretty much just something that I'm trying to get close to and to analyze the structure, the arrangement of things, get some ideas from it and try to understand what is going on? What makes this song so good? Why do we want to listen to it? And maybe why so much people, so many people want to listen to this, want to, want to, I don't know, gravitate towards this song, right? Stuff like that, okay? So if there's something you guys don't agree and um, want to be changed, you, 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 we could discuss this. I'm actually playing on streaming, 
um, some days, but um, I think this is gonna take a while because we need to like build a community or something like that, which we don't have right now. But um, my goal is to stream after we do this breakdowns and maybe on the streams, we can talk about things that you guys think they're wrong or maybe um, some other hypothesis for what happens um, in the in the songs that we're talking. After this six bars, our drums are gonna come back. So let's listen. The noise, man, it's always here, it's always present. Um, I should just put it all throughout the whole song. Um, I'm talking about this part if I didn't catch it. You hear like a wind? Something like this, it's amazing, it's really good. Um, it, it gives the organic thing to the song that I like it. It's like um, something like a nature thing, I don't know. But um, yes, we get the tambourine fading, fading in, the hi-hat fading in again, and we have this little percussive thing happening. I'm not sure if you guys can hear this. Did you hear it? I didn't really map it so good because it's hard to, to grab it. Do, 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 do. Again. It's increasing its volume. Yeah. It could be a sample loop, something like that. Oh yeah. And um, we have also this violin here getting introduced. Let's hear it. I'm gonna highlight it. Right. The sounds that I'm using for the this for the strings are very. Um, it's just a generic sound, right, guys? I didn't really I didn't really work on these sounds and actually on any sound here. I just um, tried to focus on the arrangement things, as I keep saying to you guys. So it's just this. But the notes. It's doing this descending melody here. It's just uh, an A sharp, an A, um, a G sharp, an F sharp, okay? It's again building the song, building our expectation that something's going to happen. And I believe so. That in this part here, there's some strings, I couldn't catch it. But there is, I can hear something. Right? And um, this new hi-hat here, this new pattern, it's um, again sounding to me like a triplet, but as I said before, it may be clashing with the tambourine, it may be mixed up somehow, I don't know, I'm not sure, but... Let's go a little bit ahead. You know? Something like that. It's simple, man, this song is a little, it's really simple, but um, this little details that they add makes everything so much more complicated, especially because it's underneath so much effects and so much stuff. Um, uh, I get a little bit um, carried away with stuff like that. Uh, I love it. This song now is moving, as I said before, on six bars, and we get this six bars here. Um, it's again building things up because we're gonna get presented with those guys let me not not you guy <laughs> not you man those guys here yep let's hear from this build up finally right oh i love it Okay, um, here we get we get finally introduced to our kick, our snare, 
and um, another hi hat. Okay, they're they're using a lot of um, high frequency percussion on this song. Our kick and our snare in this case are establishing the common rhythm that Boards of Canada use most of the time. That is the kind of a hip hop, kind of a boom bap um, thing that I said earlier on other videos actually, that um, is the kick hitting on the one and on the three and the snare hitting on the two and on the four, okay? So it should be like two, 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 all right? It's a fairly simple rhythm, but um, it's really, 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 really effective and um yeah this is what it is but in this case our kick here it's not really hitting on on the on the three here all right let's hear it. all right it should hit here i am not i'm not hearing a kick here but if you are um please you know again tell me but the snares on the two and on the four so one two three four one two three Cool, all right, common rhythm, and um, we're gonna analyze other songs from Boats of Canada, and you guys are gonna check it out that they love this rhythm so much. Um, it's a great rhythm, uh, anyway. So, but instead of the kick, what we hear here, um, for me, pretty clear, is the percussion stuff that I said earlier. So let's listen. Right? Let me hear. It. Okay. Right? It's doing something like a triplet, but I have no idea. But yeah, it's kind of fulfilling the role of a kick. But again, even though the kick's not appearing what it should be, um, it's not really necessary. We kind of um, comprehend what they're trying to, to emulate. Um, this hi-hat here is really interesting because um, it's way more um, syncopated, all right? Let's hear for that. So you can see here on the grid that um, it's delayed from time to time and um, this creates the groove, um, it gives um, a feeling to us that the beat is a little bit ahead sometimes and uh, it's a great thing that you can do. I mean, if the element is not so important as a kick or as a snare, the, they're not so foundational as this hi-hat is, then you can mess with a little bit with the timing of it, you know? We could put that on other spots that you think that could not be so conventional and um, you could be surprised how the beat could, could sound after that. So um, we got this for another six bars as usual and um this this here is gonna fade down now oh i'm sorry i forgot about our friend here um the violin i said earlier reappears and now it's making um one of our main melodies all right let's listen to this it's going up and down like a wave Real nice. Um, the the movement of this melody resembles a little bit the movement from the bass of the the song Raiji Beef that we discussed on a previous video. You know the going up and down movement that they love to do again. Um, so those things are interesting. They are like reoccurring things that uh, Boards of Canada use on their songs. So it's good to pay attention to those things and maybe try to develop to ourselves our own trademarks, let's say, something like that. You no know, things that we like to put on our song. So yes, this melody, it's simple in time, in rhythm, it's really simple. It's doing a B, A sharp, C sharp, B, D sharp, A, E, D sharp, and final and, and uh, ending things with an A sharp here. I don't want to talk right now about the tonality and the key. Um, I think some of you guys get a little bit bored with that. Quick spoiler is that I think that this song is in B major, in B major, but uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later. All right, so let's move on. Um, yeah, we have this six bar here. Actually, a little thing here that spice things up a little bit is this little variation here that happens on the chords and I believe on the um, the bass. Um, let's hear again what we just heard. Yeah. 
Yeah, 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 for sure. This is a little bit different. It's a bit more sad, I think. And I think the chords here are actually a D sharp minor, all right? Because um, I kept this as a F sharp major here. Let's see it. And uh, I was listening to it and I felt like it wasn't matching so much. It was, you know, being a little bit, clashing a little bit with the this, this song. So let's turn this on and let's hear this as if it was a F sharp major. And this. Right? This one doesn't clash with someone. This one does not clash. You guys agree? Right? And um, we can hear. I'm gonna turn this off. Right? That this is the same chord. It just it's just continuing. But here, it, it kind of changes, right? Yeah, I don't know if you guys um, agree or disagree with me again. Tell me in the comments, all right? So I think I'm hearing this. And that's really nice once again because um, as I'm saying it over and over again, this song is quite simple and um, uh, any variation that you can that you can add to the song, um, it's gonna be a great help to keep the listener interest to, to keep it alive and moving and um, to grab our attention more and more. okay so that's an interesting variation. But um, after this, another six bar. Another six bars, and uh, some stuff's gonna happen. The noise is getting crazy here. As you probably understood, this noise really serves the, the role to introduce the stuff, to rise the expectations. So it's, it's what it is doing here. And this time we get this change in the under energy of the song. The the drums now are gonna be a little bit more in your face, um, and they're gonna sound huge. Um, they're gonna sound so big because um, this open hi hat here is so delayed. There's so much effect on it, so much reverb that it's gonna be sounding over and over, and um, it is really not so accurate how I mapped it um, on the hits that happened, but um, it's because of that. Um, it happens um, somewhere here and the, and the delay repeats it so much that um, it kind of clashes and makes this muddy sound, this mass of a sound. Um, yes, let's listen to it. Other than the open hi-hat that we get introduced here with lots of delay, we get this new snare here. <laughs> And also something else happens here, probably. This is another one that is really tough to understand, but I think so. Yeah. There is like um feel, like a little feel with tones. Do, 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 do. Yeah. This snare here that I, th I think I'm hearing this like a ta 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 ta. The drum from before, and on top of it, amazing.
Oh man! Oh my God! The drums are so huge in this part. It's uh, it's it's as I said, this is the thing that makes the song a little bit more epic towards uh, the ending. Yeah, we have this hi hat here, this open hi hat. The drums reappear again as they did before with this hi hat, this percussion thing here happening, the clap snare. Oh, oh yes, that's true. I didn't mention that. Um, sorry, I forgot completely. Um, our snare actually is a clap that I didn't, I don't know why I didn't say this, but, um, and the, the interesting thing here is that they do a little trick with the reverb. The first snare is a little bit more dry and the second snare has a lot more of a um, tail. The reverb, the reverb has a lot more of a tail. Let's listen for that now. Two different claps and this second one, um, the reverb is a little bit more aggressive, let's say. It's um, turned up a little bit higher. Yeah, I'm sorry, I totally missed this. Just um, realize it now. And this part here, we also get another melody that is a beautiful melody played by an instrument that um, is mainly used a uh, sine wave. So uh, for me, it sounds like a Rhodes, uh, but it's probably not. Um, it's just some synth with the sine wave doing these great notes. And the note here that um, caught my attention is this D here. I think that this D only appears here in this melody. And that's really pretty, um, especially because it's again, defying uh, terms of key and tonality as Birds of Canada always do. They're not very worried about um, following a um, key, following a central tone or something like that. This, their songs always gives you the impression that they build them with um, how they feel, how they listen to stuff and what makes the that part work. Doesn't matter if it's in a scale or not. They just um, do what's supposed to do, you know, which is a great thing man, to do. Um, but this does not mean that they don't know it, all right? This does not mean they're, they are not aware of this. Probably they are, and that's why they can do it so effectively, all right? So let's hear this melody. I'm gonna highlight it. My God. Um, we have this thing that they do sometimes with the open hi-hat that they turn the delay up all the way up and the hi-hat kind of uh, the open hi-hat just repeats itself. It's so great. Let's listen to it. So it creates this massive sound that um, it, it shifts the, the sound, man. It doesn't even sound like a hi-hat after a while. It's again. The melody. I believe that this drum feel is happening from time to time. Yeah, I kind of hear it here. Right. It's just that there are so many elements, man. Again, the delay. Nice. Our violin comes back again. Nice, real nice. What started as a simple song with simple elements, it's now at this point so much more complex with so much more elements there are so many layers happening here as i said the the drums are crazy man at this part things are happening here a lot of things i couldn't even map it and then um, after a while i just gave up i thought um that it would be hard you know the the main idea i suppose that they were trying was like to fuck things up you know man to make it big to make it sound huge and aggressive and 
and make it almost like, a, as I said, like a muddy thing, a blurry thing that you can't really distinguish what's happening uh, on, and when it starts, when it ends and stuff like that. So yeah, and this part here, um, our violin that comes back, do a thing, does a thing here, interesting. But I don't know if everybody can hear this, but um, here it just ends on the A sharp and holds it. It's holding, right? It should also do this here, but it doesn't. It actually increases to maybe a D sharp. Yeah, I am I'm changing that now. I thought it was a C sharp, but I'm supposing this is a the D sharp because um of this little variation here, as I said earlier, that is doing a G whoops, this should be a, a D here. This is doing a D sharp minor, okay? So I think this violin here it's um following this variation. So it should be something like this. I'm gonna turn it off, just the song. Nice, I believe so, that's the case. And we got another variation here, I'm turning this off, on the percussion thing that happened before let's listen there is like a tune to it i'm not sure what it is let's listen do, do, do. again the same yeah i'm i'm pretty sure that this probably happened earlier it's just that they um they put so much stuff on top of everything that it's tough to keep track of things okay but um I'm hearing those elements here, and as I said before, this is so chaotic, so full of full of layers that um, it's kind of useless to be precise and accurate on, on the things you're gonna catch. All right, this goes for these strings here. I'm not sure if they are here, but I'm hearing so much. Um, I'm hearing so much harmony content here that I'm supposing, I'm assuming they're there, but I'm not sure. I can't. I couldn't. You know sustain it and if they are there probably this chord here should not even be doing what it's doing should be um doing ah, just this change here it should be like a d, mi d minor d sharp minor as i said earlier we get getting towards the song towards the end of the song and uh, it's just gonna get crazier and crazier two melodies working pretty well together cool. the delay trick I said earlier the delay on open I had here isolated it ends with the chords and our little friend that was with us all the time. The noise. <laughs> so graceful. <laughs> this noise, man, I'm telling you, it's really important. It's um, it's actually playing throughout the whole song. And not only really not just playing, but um, it's, um, it's building the energy of the song from time to time. Yeah, they have this little um, silences here from things and elements that they take it out. To make things a little bit, but a little bit more dramatic, like this. You know, but yeah, the feel here. It's crazy, man. It's a crazy drum pattern that they do here. In this sense, the song is very unique. You know, this drum sounds almost like a conventional drumming, um, although it's obviously not. It's pretty muddy and blurry and tough to get but um as i said this is a song about the build up of things they start with this chord progression here change things a little bit here with this extension here of the f sharp major 
turning a four bar loop into a six bar loop but that's about it after that we just get six bars after six bars with those variations that are really important you have to keep in mind that the variation and even though they could be simple or minor or just a tiny thing they are really important to keep the listener to keep the listener basically to keep it to keep the person that's listening to your song interested so yeah i think that's about it um with the with this song with dave and cowboy